When you have a long program, you normally want to divide it up into separate chunks. And those chunks are called procedures or functions. And that's the subject of this part of the tutorial. So here I've got the PROC project. And let me just show you what it is. I'll run it first. It's a very simple program. So here it's compiling, building, and it just prompts me to enter my name. So that's my name. And I can click a button and it says, hello, Hugh, my name, or it says goodbye, followed by my name. And if I don't enter anything and click one of the buttons, then it warns me, you must enter your name. So that's all the program does. Now, let's have a look at the code. The hello button just tests if edit1.texts, that's the text that's in the edit1 component, if it's empty, if it's an empty string. So if it's an empty string, then it calls show error message. Show error message is this procedure up here. Otherwise, if I've entered something, if I've entered my name into that box, then this line is executed. Show message is a standard function that's supplied as part of the code library with Lazarus or, or with Delphi. And it displays hello plus the text that I edit, entered into the edit box, which was in the example when I just ran it. It's just my name. And the same thing with goodbye button. It does exactly the same tests. And it either shows the message, hello, or in this case, goodbye, plus the edit text, uh, or it calls show error message to provide a warning to tell me that I need to enter my name. Now, show error message is a procedure that I've written. It is called from either of these functions. Now, there are two advantages of this. One is that by giving it a name, it effectively lets me document my code. So when I come across this bit of code down here, I can immediately tell that the intention of the programmer is to show an error message when the edit1.text box is empty, because that's the name that I've given to the procedure. It's a descriptive name. But the other advantage is that when I want to show that message, I don't have to write it twice. You see here, in this procedure down here, hello button click, I could have put this line of code. Similarly, I could have put this line of code, the same line of code, into goodbye button click. But why should I do that? It's exactly the same line of code. Now, it's much simpler just to have a procedure that wraps up any code that I want to reuse. Now, bear in mind that this is a very, very simple program. In a real-world program, procedures are likely to contain much, much more complex pieces of code. It could be a procedure that does some complicated calculation. I really don't want to keep repeating that every time I want that calculation to be done. So, in terms of reusability, it's better to put code that I want to use more than once, in more than one place in my program, into its own named procedure. And that's what I've done here. One other thing I mentioned, just in passing, is that in Pascal, I can call a procedure, a simple procedure such as this, one that doesn't take any arguments, and I'll explain arguments shortly, one that is called simply by its name. I can just specify the name when I call it. In many languages, if I call a procedure like that, I would have to put empty brackets after it to show it's a procedure. And I would also have to declare the procedure with empty brackets like that. In uh, object Pascal, it doesn't matter. I've here added the empty brackets, and I can run it again. And the code works just the same. But in Pascal, you don't have to do that. So it's up to you whether or not you put those brackets there. Now, in the last example, I had a procedure that didn't take any input values. Here you can see I've got two procedures that take some input. That's one here and another here. These are called parameters. Now, the way that they work is, let's see how it's, this error proc, for example, is called. It's called by this button click handler down here. If edit1.text contains an empty string, error proc is called with a string message. That is, this string enclosed between uh, parentheses. It is received by error proc, and that string is assigned to this data item, this parameter 
called EWRMSG, which is of type string. So the parameter must match the type of data sent to it. And that's okay here because I'm sending a string. Now, the value that's sent formally is called the argument. The value received, or rather the declaration of the identifier up here, is called a parameter. Programmers often don't make that distinction, though, and they'll talk about arguments in both the procedure header, as here, and to describe the value that's sent from the calling code, as down here. Now, when you send arguments, you must be sure to send the correct type, and uh, if there's more than one value being sent, then you must make sure that the correct number is sent too. And you can see an example up here of two arguments. These are two string arguments, and they're divided by a comma. They both have the same type, so they're followed by a colon and the type name, which is string. And once they're received by the function or the procedure, they can be used, as here, just like normal variables. But they cannot be used outside the function or procedure which receives them. So greeting and username, these two names, these two identifiers, can only be used inside this function between the begin and end markers. Now, a function. What's the difference between a function and a procedure? A function here begins with the function keyword rather than the procedure keyword. But there's another difference. Following the argument list, there's a colon and a data type specifier. That shows that this function returns a value to the code that called it, and the value has to be of the string data type. The traditional way to return a value from a function in Pascal is to use the function's name. That's here, and you can see I've used it here and here. And these two lines say return as a value from this function what is on the right of this assignment operator. So, if username is empty, then I return this string from the function. Otherwise, I return greeting, that's the value that was sent to it, plus username, another value that was sent to it, as the value returned from the function. So, when message function is called, I call it here with hello and the contents of the text box. And that assigns the return value to this variable. And the variable can then be displayed. Now, there's another way of returning a value. Let me just comment this out and uncomment this alternative version of the function code. In modern Pascal implementations, those used by Free Pascal and Delphi, for example, there are often other ways of returning results. And the standard way here is to use this implicit variable called result. So result is not declared anywhere in my code. But if I assign a value to result in a function, then that has the effect of returning the value to the calling code. So it's an alternative to using the function name. Another change I've made in this function is to declare a local variable called msg of the data type string. A local variable exists. It can only be referenced inside the function in which it's declared. When I've declared variables previously, I've declared them above the functions, and they've been available to all the functions and procedures in that code unit. That's generally not good practice because it makes the variables too available. It makes them too easy to change. So, as a general principle, it is usually better when you want some value to be changed to send it, send some value to a function and return some result from that function. And that's what I've done here. But this time, there is only one point at which I can return a value. That's in this final line. 
Remember, in the previous version, the one up here that I've just commented out, there were two places where I could return a value. That's when I used the name of the function to return the value here, and again here. Now remember, I'm working at the moment in a very small and simple program, so you might not see the benefit of having only one place in which a value can be returned. But in real-world programs, a single function could be quite large, could be quite complicated. And if there are multiple places at which a value can be returned, those places could be difficult to spot in a complicated function. So, simply for the sake of clarity, it's usually better to try to have only one place right at the end of a function where a value is returned. That will save you a lot of debugging headaches later on.